Our first guest tonight is an Oscar-winning actor who could beat up every person in this room. But she wouldn't do that because she's very nice. She gives voice to Mar Morticia in The Addams Family 2. It opens the theaters and on demand tomorrow. Please say hello to Charlize Theron. <laughs> It's so nice to see you. COVID cheated us out of our three-way kiss, but... Uh... The good news is we've had so many. We have had, probably for you, from your perspective, too many. No. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about you today. You know, we have like a little meeting before the show, and then I know you will have a phone call with one of our producers, and you guys talk about what do you want to talk, and she was just saying, oh, she's so nice, and everybody's like, yes, yes, she's so nice, 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 nice. And then I know, like, you know Guillermo from the kids' soccer <laughs> games, and, uh, and you are, you realize you don't have to be this nice. Like, you could get away with a whole lot. I don't know if I can. I feel like I sometimes have that, like, rest bitching face that I have to work against. No. I, Not I, at all. I think you, I do. You have no idea how much abuse you could heap upon me, and I would take it. I would take it all. Well, don't encourage me. Oh, well, um, <laughs> uh, okay, well, I retract Well, that's very no. nice. No, I, but it's true, because you, you have everything going for you. You're very talented, very successful, very beautiful, all that stuff. You don't have to be so nice to people. You could, oh, yes, you could roam like Godzilla through this town if you wanted to. I don't know what to do with this information. You all... Do what you will with it. Take it, you know, I would imagine that, like, when you go places, do people just give you stuff? I don't know. I mean, listen, I feel very fortunate. I feel like people do give me way more than I probably deserve. But, I mean, the bottom line is, like, I remember being at soccer games with you, and yes. we had so much fun. Like, it's so much nicer to be nice and have fun. I agree with you. Like, it is nice to so be much, nice. It's so much harder. I think it's way more to, like, make a real effort to be an <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's exhausting. You think it's harder to it's do? It's exhausting. Are you saying you're too lazy to be mean? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think that's really what I'm saying. Last night, I was at a pizza place picking up a couple of pizzas, and a guy from the pizza place is called La Mora Pizzeria. The guy just gave me some chicken wings, and I thought... Oh, Food. look at that. It's I just get free chicken wings. That's the greatest part of the job. And by the way, you acknowledge that. So that's good. You're aware of it. You're I, not I expecting it. You're like, this is a nice treat. I was thrilled with it. <laughs> I mean, I don't need those extra calories, certainly, but I had them anyway. I ate them on my way home. I, I would have had them with you. <laughs> you. So you had a birthday last month, and you celebrated in a very... Interesting way, I think, is a good way to put yeah. it. Yeah. I have a photograph, but before I show the picture, give us a little, explain a little bit of the backstory about what you did. Well, I have the best friends in the whole wide world, and they decided to throw me a surprise party while we were on vacation. We all, a group of us, try to go away every summer, and some of us have kids, and so we try to make this one trip every summer where our kids get to hang out. And, uh, you know, given the year, the year and a half that we've had, we were very excited about the strip I was. Very excited. And I wasn't really expecting anything. I knew we would be there over my birthday, but the we were so excited about the trip that I was not expecting anything, so... You figured it'd just be the trip was the party. That was it, and then maybe they'd do a dinner. And, and, and so slowly they would say things like, listen, tomorrow night... Uh, we're gonna take the girls, we need you to just stay in your room for a second. And I really thought they were just setting the table and things like that. And then five minutes before I was supposed to come out, I got a knock and somebody had delivered this box with this outfit and a wig. And they were like, please put this on. And it was this like 80s attire. I mean, I know my 80s attire from a mile away, so I knew what that was. So I was like, oh, they're throwing an 80s part, a like a birthday dinner. So I very eagerly put my synthetic wig on and my uh, cut crop top and uh, walked out and then realized that they were throwing me like the surprise prom 80s murder mystery party. A prom 80s murder mystery party. Yes. And, and they had traveled because we went to Greece. And so they had traveled all of the stuff with them. This is, if my friends had done this, they would have delivered the box to my room and I would have put on the 80s costume and I would have walked in the party. I would have been the only one in a costume. <laughs> That's how I that like would have done. I like your friends. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> one of them sitting over there. Who, yeah. <laughs> this is a photograph from the party. Now, I get the 80s thing and the prom thing, but how did the murder mystery part work its way into the party? Well, I am obsessed with true crime. So yes, this you love that. Really, yeah, I love true crime. I live for true crime. I am true crime. <laughs> I, uh, so it worked perfectly for me. And and there was something really funny about, I don't know if you had, if you, we've seen this on TV, right? Like people having these parties. But the thing that I didn't think about was that some of these friends I've had for close to 30 years, and I've never seen them act. Oh. And that was hilarious to see friends that you know that well trying to be characters uh -huh. and trying to not be the murderer. And then like my one friend just died and it was the worst dying I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> and that was the best part of the whole night. I was like, I, I was like, peeing myself, laughing so hard. I was like, I've never seen you guys be such idiots. And they're probably like, yeah, we don't have an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember who won. I just remember him dying. I was laughing so hard. I might have had a few cocktails by then, too. I see, all right. I was stuck in my room. You, as we know, you're originally from South Africa, and um, you went back to, to the Congo, actually. You went to the yeah. Congo to visit Jane Goodall. Yeah. Which is, uh, how do you know Jane Goodall? I didn't know her. This oh. was a couple of years ago. I was asked to be part of this Iconoclast series that they did, and they said, who would you like to do it with? And Jane was the no-brainer for me just because of the work that she does in Africa. And as a young African girl, she was somebody that I always looked up to. So we decided to go and meet her in the Congo. And so they said, Charlie Theron is coming to meet you. And she said, oh, yeah, I know. Like, she, she watches movies and stuff. I, don't, I do not think she's ever seen a movie that I've been in. Really? No, I don't think so. So you she, were a stranger to her. Yes. I mean, this is a woman who now in her 80s is still traveling 300 days out of the year, you know, to, to help save this environment of ours. It's incredible, the work that she does. She doesn't have time to watch Atomic Blonde. I see. <laughs> And she is very busy. Do you bring a gift when you go to visit somebody like Jane? Goodall? I felt like I that was what the the right thing to do. I felt like I should at least ask. She travels a lot, and we were gonna stay out in the bush with her. We were gonna sleep in tents, which I mean was just mind-boggling to me that I was gonna get this experience, not just with her, but in her environment. Yeah. So I figured that the right thing to do would be to offer that we would cook dinner. And if there was anything that she was missing that we could bring. And I was thinking she was going to say some food or something. And she was like, whiskey. <laughs> I miss whiskey. Hey, grill her and up a I, bottle of whiskey. I know. And I went, I knew I liked you for a reason. <laughs> so we brought a bottle of whiskey. And we figured the easiest thing to cook would be pasta, because there'd be a fire and there'd be a pot and hot water, make some pasta. And we, I really wanted to impress her. Like, I was like a little girl, just really You can't trying. bring bananas, right? Like, you couldn't bring, they like, a, a bunch of bananas. Of yeah, they, so. get, they have a few of those. Yeah. So I, we got the pot on the, on the hot fire, and then the water started boiling. We were making the pasta, and I was feeling really good. And then I realized I didn't know how to get the pot off the flame. Like, how do I get this hot? I can't touch it. Oh, yeah. I'm in yeah. the middle. So then I'm like, I remember like, oh, you put this like stick in and then that's how you lift it up. And now I'm feeling really confident I have this. And as I was lifting it up from the fire, the water spilled over and took the fire out. And there's no lights. Like, fire is very valuable when you're in the bush. <laughs> And she was not impressed with Oh, that. really? No, not <laughs> impressed at all. And I, like, salvaged the fire, and I'm, like, shaking. I'm, like, so nervous. I'm just, like, trying to, like, fix the fire and make the pasta. And she's just in the back going, where's the whiskey? Where's the whiskey? <laughs> and we, we ended up drinking whiskey and eating way overcooked pasta till, like, 3 a.m. And she's just an incredible storyteller, so she just told us these incredible stories till, like, the sun came up. Were the chimps around? Yeah, so we were where they basically keep them. Um, they weren't by the fire drinking They didn't have any with whiskey us. with you? No, no, they weren't enjoying it. Oh, wouldn't that be great, though? It would have been amazing. Although, yeah. they pee on you. Nobody tells you that. They, yeah. they urinate on you. Oh, did that happen to yes, you? Yes, that happened, yes. That's their way of saying hello? That's just, they just don't know how to hold it. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're not, pot they're not potty Do they trained. do that to everyone or just you? No, they just... Wait a second. <laughs> I mean, maybe they're just really Wait excited. A second. <laughs> I, I just maybe think they somebody... saw Atomic Blonde. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, holy! <laughs> it's 
it's not, it's, yeah, when you're camping and you have urinating pants oh. that have been urinated on, it's not funny, I have a picture of you and Matt Damon here from, oh, okay, no, oh, that is, now, was this, this looks like it was a sweet moment. Do you see how scared I am? I'm like, I don't, I have heard of people's faces being eaten alive. I'm a little apprehensive in that. I don't blame you. That's a chimpanzee. He doesn't know what's going on. They're so cute. Yeah. So yeah, you should be afraid of anyone that urinates on you when they greet you, in general. <laughs> That's, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> that's one of the statements I live by. <laughs> Charlie Theron is here. Her movie is called The Adam Family 2. We'll be right back. That could take forever. <gasps> I have the very solution to the problem, Karamia. We'll take a family road trip. What? You've always wanted to see more of this great country. Well, it's true. We have some of the best dark secrets as countries go. Then it's settled. We are going on an Adam's family vacation. We are back with Charlie Theron, one of the stars of the Adam's family too. I've been watching the um, I've been watching the first movie with my kids now. We as we do, we watched it like four nights ago, and now have watched it every single night Aww. because they love it so much and they're very excited about this. Yeah, my kids love it too. I mean, I don't know. I feel like everything that I've done in my career. Like, my kids are never going to see any of my movies until they're at least 52, right? This is, like, the, the first time that I've done something. And I, deep down inside, we're just always trying to impress our kids, Yes, right? sure, like, especially with something like this. Oh, my God. And, uh... You think you're going to come home, there's going to be you a parade. Know, you've done, you've done, uh, you did Paw Patrol. Yeah, I was yeah. in the Paw Patrol movie, and yes. they were kind of excited about that. And, but not as excited as I would like. They... Kids walk this fine line of letting you know that it's good, but they're never gonna let you know that it's great. Like, it's like this fine line of like, my mom's Morticia, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm Morticia. She's like, okay, calm down. <laughs> Don't tell everybody you're Morticia. Stop talking about it. You are uh, an Elvis Costello fan? Yes. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. I am too, I'm excited I'm that he's here. Fan. Have you met him before? I did, oh my gosh. I went to Disneyland, this was, oh my God, I wanna say maybe four years ago. And uh, I go for my kids, but there's one ride that I always like, that I make sure that I do and they can't do, and it's the Tower of Terror. Oh, okay, yeah. And so I was kind of like trying to figure out a way like who could watch my kids while I go and do it. And, and they were like, oh, so go stand over there and they'll let you in. And, and I noticed this guy with his hat. I'm like, that looks a lot like Elvis Costello. I'm like, oh my God, that's Elvis Costello. And I left my kids with a pickle and a Mickey Mouse hat and not a human and ran over and started talking to him. I was fangirling out. And then finally we went into the ride and the lady was like, you, you have to remove your hat. And I was like, Elvis Costello is not removing his hat. So, and she's like, no, no, he is. And then I got on the ride and he did not remove his hat. He, he did the Tower of Terror in his hat. <laughs> and that is why I love Elvis Costello. <laughs> Well, that's, of all the reasons. <laughs> the Tower of Terror in his hat. And how was the Tower of Terror? Did you and Elvis Love ride it. together? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I wish he was in my photo, because, you know, they take a photo of you, but he's not in my photo. If Elvis had let out a, um, a high-pitched scream on the Tower of Terror, would you respect him uh, less? I want to believe he didn't. It, he didn't. Of course he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very good to see you. So the uh, Adams Family 2 uh, opens in theaters and on demand on Friday. Charlie Theron, everybody, will be back with Elvis Costello. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't.